Do you want to know how to solve any dynamic programming questions? Then you came to the right place. In this video, I'm going to introduce four simple steps to solve any dynamic programming question. This video is going to give you a little bit of structure to understand other DP problems. And I was really excited to make this video because this problem was requested by one of my subscribers. Before I introduce four steps, I want to just introduce today's question. Today's question is counts of subsets with sum equal to x. So what does this mean? Let's say we have this problem. A, array A, we have array A. It has one, two, three, three. And then we have integer x, uh, x equals to six. What it means is that in this case, the answer is, answer is three because we can have subsets, one, two, three, one, two, three, and three, three. All right, the answer is six. We are just counting each subset with sum equal to this x value, okay? So this three is this three, and this three is this three, okay? All of these threes are different. This three is this three, this three is this three. All right, so um, so answer is three. All right, let's talk about uh, four basic steps. Basic steps to solve dynamic programming. Number one step is to find out your subproblems. For example, let's say we have, as we talked about before, we have this problem. Let's just look at the example. One, two, three, three and x is equal to six. Subproblems, there are three subproblems. One is suffix, and number two is prefix, and then three is substring. So what does this mean? So in order to solve this problem, we want to try out every single subsets, right? How do we try every single subset? So we can do something like this. We can try this subset, this subset, and this subset, this subset. This way, at the, at the end of this recursive call, the smallest subset is going to be just three. So uh, that's suffix. And if we define our subproblem as prefix, then we're gonna have this subarray, this subarray, this subarray, this subarray. At the end of this recursive call, the smallest subproblem will be just one prefix. And substring is something like this. If you have this array or sets or whatever, you're gonna split this array, something like something like this. Your smallest subproblem is going to be somewhere um, somewhere on this. So that's substring. In this case, we're gonna use suffix. In this case, we don't need to use substring. We can solve with this too. Using this substring, then dynamic programming solution becomes a little bit more complicated because you're gonna have recursive calls within nested for loop or you know for loop or whatever. So in this case, we're gonna define our subproblem as a i colon. Okay, so it means from i, we're gonna have subproblem this. Okay, if i is two, we're gonna have subproblem this. From this, we're gonna at the end, we're gonna have subproblem this. So number two, step number two is define your DP. So what does this mean? Okay, define. In order to define your DP, you have to understand the problem clearly and you have to understand your subproblems clearly. After you understand your subproblems, you're going to be able to find you're going to be able to define your dp. Let's try to define our dp. So let's define define our dp. dp of uh, i x, okay? So let's say we have this dp recursive call function and I don't want to pass this whole array into this dp function because once we have this index, we can just split the array however we want. So let's just pass in 
uh, the index. So let's define our DP. Find number of subsets so that each uh, subset sum to x. Okay. So this is our DP, and the step number three is guessing. So what does this mean? Guessing is what we do when we have the smallest subproblem. So we're going to have recursive call and at the end of the call, we're going to have the smallest subproblem, right? And we're going to have, we're going to have a smallest subproblem. This I is going to be uh, 0, 1, 2, 3. And then X is going to be some value. X might not be 6. So at the end of the day with the smallest subproblem and this X, what do we do with that, right? What do we do with that? So what we want to do is, do we count? This is what we have to do, okay? Do we count that element? W what it means is that, can this be a sum? So for example, at the end of this recursive call, we have, for example, we have three and three, okay? We are grabbing this x is three. Do we want to include this into the subsets, right? We include it because x the sum is equal to 3. So uh, that's what we do. Again, the guessing is something, some operation that you do uh, when the small, when the sub problem is uh, the minimum. Here's number four. The most important part of the step is this, finding out recurrence relationship. If you're new to dynamic programming and if you don't know what recurrence relationship, I actually recommend solving some uh, really, really, really basic dynamic programming for uh, such as Fibonacci sequence, solving Fibonacci sequence. Um, in Fibonacci sequence, the recurrence relationship is, right? Because Fibonacci sequence is something like this. The sixth Fibonacci sequence is eight because uh, this eight is three plus five, right? And this is uh, fourth, five, uh, three here. So five is five is equals to uh, three fourth Fibonacci number, right? So that's a recurrence relationship. In this case, um, I assume that you all know uh, what recurrence relationship is. So I'm just gonna remove it here. Our recurrence relationship dp of i x equals to, all right, dp of i plus one x plus dp of i plus 1 x minus a i plus 0 or 1. This is our recurrence relationship. Okay, let's try to understand this. Uh, bear with me, you're going to be able to understand this. Okay, um, I made a mistake. Here from from i subarray, okay, this is our uh, dp. So our dp is find the number of subsets from i subarray so that even sub, so that um, each subset sum to x, okay? That's our dp. So what does this mean? dp of i x is finding the subsets, finding the number of subsets. Let's say we have this array, okay? And then, dp of i x, we can actually find out this answer here. Okay, let's say we have this element here, and then this is i th element. Okay, in order to find answer from this subarray, we have to know answer from this subarray. Okay, and then this is i plus one element. So the answers, actually we can create answers from this two part. This part, actually we don't include this ith element to, um, we don't actually use this ith element, okay? We still still pass the same x into the next sub problem because the, the, uh, the ith element couldn't fit into this x, okay? In this case, um, there are, there might be an answer that the, the specific sum 
you can actually uh, put this ith element into the subset that sum to this sum to this arbitrary number x, right? So that's the answer when we include uh, this ith element. This is the answer from when we exclude that ith element into our answer. So in this case, we still have to solve the current problem. So in this case, we have this ith element, right? And then um, at the point we have this number x, um, with this ith element, we have to know that if we can actually, we have to find out this ith element is equal to x. So because that's when we actually, um, that's when we can actually include this um, ith element into sum. That's what we got to do. Let's rephrase it, okay? Our answer, our answer from this subarray, we can know when we solve the problem of this subarray. And then the answer of this subarray, there is two part that previously we, we didn't include this ith element into the answer, into the subset, that's this case. And the previous ith element happened to be um, contributed to this sum, that's this case. Okay, so this is this part. Like, do we do we count this the current element uh, to the sum, right? That's what we are guessing here. And then this is also the guessing part here. As I mentioned, guessing is what you do when you have the smallest size of sub problem. What is our smallest size of sub problem? Is probably if you define your sub problem as suffix. Okay your smallest subproblem is three. When you have this three, when you have this three, and then you have some sort of a n sum here, some value here, what you gotta figure out is, can this three be x, right? Because now you, you only have subset three. So this part is doing that part, okay? That's what guessing is. You're gonna have the smallest subset, um, and then you have to figure that out if that smallest sub smallest subset, smallest uh, subproblem sums to the x. If it is x, then the value is 1. If it is not, then value is 0, okay? Yeah, that's how you solve it. So, and then after you figure out all these four basic steps, then you can actually draw a call stack and draw some graph to understand these problems better. And of course, while you were having um, while you were computing these recursive calls, most of the time there are gonna be some duplicate calls. And then duplicate calls, it's a waste of time. So we use memoization. Uh, if you're using the bottom-up approach, you can have a table and then you can calculate the current problem using the previous calculation and stuff like that. All right, now let's talk about the complexity. What's time space complexity of that algorithm? So most of the times in dynamic programming, the uh, time complexity is number of subproblems multiplied by um, time it takes to solve that specific subproblem. Okay, in this case, our case, it's the uh, the time complexity is going to be uh, the length of array the x. So the reason why we get this runtime is that if you look at this, uh, all the writing here, uh, this part, our DP is consisted with the, uh, when we exclude this, uh, the current, current item into the subset, and then we, when we couldn't put this, uh, the current item, current integer into the some sort of sum, right? There are two cases. In order, and then we reduce the size of the problem by uh, subtracting stuff. And then that is why we get this answer. If you were thinking about bottom up approach, we have this number of sub problems and we are going to have this X because you're going to have, you're going to end up have 2D array of uh, this represent X and then this represent um, array element here, right? And then you're gonna build up this 2D array and then you're gonna have this time complexity. Also, space complexity, this is time. Space complexity is the same too. So it's gonna be just a 
length of a multiplied by x because we are filling up this 2D array. And then depending on these a values, we're going to have this number of call stack. So whether you use bottom-up algorithm, whether you use top-down algorithm using recursion, these, these are the uh, answer. And then the generally, uh, here is the general rule of time complexity, okay? Number of subproblems multiplied by time it takes to solve that specific problem. In our, in our case, it was just constant, so we didn't need to count, okay? All right, that's it. All right, everyone, this is the end of the video. Hopefully this explanation is helpful. I, try, I tried my best to generalize uh, basic steps to solve dynamic programming. And also this problem was actually requested by one of my subscribers. Uh, my channel is really small and there was a request. I'm so happy that someone is watching my video. So uh, yeah, if you have more requests, uh, please comment down below or um, talk to me somehow uh, at me on Insta Instagram or whatever. Um, yeah, explaining DP is kind of hard because DP, there's a, there's a lot of magic going on <laughs> in DP problem. And if you have these four basic steps, you're gonna be able to kind of approach DP problem a little bit in a structured way. Find out the sub problems and define your DP and find out what what you do with the smallest sub problem and then from that find out your recurrence relationship after you find out all of these recurrence relationships you can actually define the range of i's and j's and k's or whatever with that recurrence relationship and with those specific ranges of your sub problems then you're going to be able to come up with code relatively easily yeah so I'm going to unload my answer on the comment. So I have these four solutions on the comment. So yeah, make sure you check them out. And if you think, and if you have a better solution or answer, please comment below. Thank you so much. And don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe my channel if you like this video. Thank you so much. See you later.